Welcome back to Making Manga, the series where I make manga, and to continue my manga journey, let's get into my second one-shot. Starting off with the main inspiration for this one-shot. The idea for it didn't come from a cartoon, or manga, or comic. No, it actually came from an art book. That art book being Simon Stallenhog's The Electric State. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I have not read it yet, but I have to watch some YouTube videos about it, and I love, love The Electric State. It's, it's an amazing piece of art. You should 100% check it out. And also, I'd like to mention, when I googled it to look at some references, I learned about the movie, which I'm incredibly hyped for. But getting back on track, the setting was what was really inspired by The Electric State, and the story just kind of developed from there. The story being two characters, the main character is Casey and Ron, exploring a huge mechanical structure for an engine in an apocalyptic world, but they encounter a dangerous obstacle. So to start off, I began with designing the characters, and oh boy, the first designs for the characters were not it. But hey, that's just how it goes with character designing. I designed Casey first and tried spiky hair, and that was just not fitting her at all. So I toned it down a bit, and this design, I actually really like it. It just doesn't feel like it fits her character. But I kept the head similar for the final design and landed on something I quite like and feel like fits her character. Now for Ron, and boy do I love Ron's design. Well, his name is Ronald, but it's Ron for short. And yeah, this final design is drastically different from the first. Like, look at this, what even is this? And you might have noticed the scarf is a sticky note. I wanted to try out a scarf and got lazy and just drew it on a sticky note. But next in line is designing the mechanical structure. The first thing I drew was this turtleneck, and I just kind of drew whatever these are. And so I'd put a sticky note over and try drawing an abandoned mech and landed on that design. I did some other designs for the head, but I ended up with something pretty much the same as the first sketch. I'd like to mention here I got very inspired by Hellboy's art. I, lo I love Mike Mignola's art style, it's awesome. I don't actually think much is really inspired, I just wanted to talk about Hellboy. Oh, and in the last video, I said I'd script this manga. And I just forgot to. I started storyboarding, got a good way in, and realized I forgot a script. And like a fool, I also did what I did last time. I storyboarded the first page and drew it left to right when I'm going for that manga style of right to left. Luckily it was just the first page this time. I also remembered I needed to design a monster for this manga. Three pages into storyboarding, it's kind of the main conflict of it. And I named this monster Kamukto, as suggested by a good friend of mine. So, after the storyboards, Starting the final pages, I'm really happy with this first page. I really like the establishing draw I drew. Although I realized I might have subconsciously took inspiration from that one Scooby-Doo villain in the theme park episode. But from page two onwards, I think I went a little overboard texturing the backgrounds. Also another problem I had was that when I was drawing the smaller details, I was basically just doing pixel art. You can't notice any pixels in the page files, but I can definitely see it in Clip Studio, so I don't know how to fix that. And another thing I need to start doing is using vector layers. Like, vector layers are just so much more superior. I have no clue why I haven't been using them. I'm such a fool for now. You can change line width, you can scale drawings and they still look good. Vector layers are just so much better. I also got some one piece faces in here. I love the exaggerated faces in one piece. And now, on the last page, I did the Adventure Time opening, this for the last panel, using Casey and Ron and Sid though. But that's it for the pages, and now for toning. I wanted to do less toning, like how it is usually in manga, but it just didn't work out that way. I don't know how to more selectively use toning. That's something I need to work on. Something I did here that I didn't do in Soup Saga was choosing the main character's colors before toning, so I could more easily choose the grades used. Other than that, not much to say about toning. Now, for the cover, I spent a while trying to get the right colors. Like, here's the colors I picked for Casey and Ron, and here's the colors I had, so I did have to compromise a bit. But for the last part of this video, something I forgot to do in the last video, write down what I need to work on. Now, if any of you fine folk notice anything I don't mention I should work on, please tell me. I'm only human after all. But onto what I need to work on. First, anatomy. I'm already working on that though, so that's good. Next is pacing. I feel like my pacing is at best. Next, toning. I want to make my toning more manga-like. Proportions, some of these, some of these proportions, man. And finally, not having plot inconsistencies. Because if you read it, you'll see Ron asked Casey to turn on the flashlight, but I didn't draw Casey holding the flashlight. Like, where did it go? I just straight up forgot. 
But to end off this video, I'd like to thank my friends for being awesome. You know who you are. And I'd like to thank the two commenters, Pyrex Nemo Beats and Sarja Visual Animations. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to comment. If you made it this far, thank you and tell me how your day was. And if you have any projects you're working on, I'd like to hear about it. But I think that's about it for this video. Peace.